Hey everybody, Samantha here, back with another video. If you're new to my channel, then welcome. Thank you guys so much for clicking onto this video. And if you are a subscriber or even just a viewer of some of my previous videos, thank you guys so much for your continued support. I absolutely love doing this and I love connecting with you guys. Now if you are a new viewer, and this is the first video of mine that you are clicking on, you might have guessed based on the title of this video, but this is my channel where I love to talk about and show my beloved exotic pets. But this is not the only thing that I would like to do on this channel. I would also love to bring you guys along my journey into a wildlife career. My dream is to get into wildlife conservation, research, and education. I'm very passionate about saving the wildlife that inhabit this world with us. And pretty soon I will be volunteering at some wildlife facilities in my local area to help myself gain the knowledge needed to get into a wildlife career. And I'm going to be bringing you guys along for the journey. Now these are future plans for the channel, but I did just kind of want to let you guys know a little bit more about the channel as well as myself. And I did also want to take a little look at this new t-shirt that I got here because it is absolutely adorable and I love it. My dad actually bought this t-shirt for me off of the Australia Zoo website and it does state that I am a wildlife warrior. We all can be wildlife warriors and take the steps necessary to help this world and all the animals that inhabit it. Alright, well for today's video we're going to be discussing tarantula behavior and temperament. Now as most of you guys might know, I do only have one tarantula at the moment, so I did have to reach out to a multitude of different tarantula keepers so that I could get some good footage and pictures of tarantulas so that I could better describe the temperaments and behavior of each species. Now I am also going to be collabing with Tanya's Tease a little bit in this video. I will link her channel down in the description and definitely go and check her out. Alright, well let's get right to talking about tarantula behavior and temperament. There are two general categories of tarantula, terrestrial and arboreal. Burrowing may also be considered a category, although all burrowing species are considered to be terrestrial, so typically they are grouped together. These categories relate directly to the behavior of the tarantula. Terrestrial tarantulas need more floor space in their enclosure since they spend most of their time on the ground and are not built for climbing. Typically terrestrials construct a shelter in vegetation or they utilize a short tunnel or hide. Although many don't mind sitting right out in the open, it's always beneficial to give them some sort of hide. They may also burrow if they feel the need to and many prefer creating burrows over using hides. They will line their burrow with silk to keep dirt out and maintain the structure of the burrow. Typically while hunting, terrestrial tarantulas will sit and wait in their burrow for prey to come near the entrance. Tarantulas are not able to see too much more than light, darkness, and motion. They mainly rely on touch and sensing vibrations to catch prey and detect danger. So they will sit and wait in their burrows until they sense the vibrations of prey coming near the entrance of their burrow, and then they will jump out and ambush that prey, and that will be its next meal. Also, if they are out wandering around, if prey happens to stumble close by, they will do the same thing and ambush them so that they can have a meal. As stated before, terrestrial tarantulas are not built for climbing. They have very thick, strong legs and rounded bodies, making them not the best with agility. In the wild, you will find them close to the ground, typically near a burrow. 
In captivity, you want a decent amount of substrate in their enclosure to limit climbing space and make sure they have plenty of room to burrow. This reduces the risk of potential falls, as a fall from even a short distance can harm or even be fatal to the tarantula. Arboreal tarantulas are the complete opposite. They love to climb and are completely built for it. They have a much lighter build than terrestrials with thinner bodies and longer legs. Their legs are also much more flat and have thick hair along the last two segments. This increases surface area and allows them to effortlessly climb. Since they are so light, they're built for agility, speed, and are more protected from falls. In captivity, they need a taller enclosure with plenty of things to climb on. In the wild, some live in low vegetation areas like tall grasses and bushes, while others live in trees, seeking shelter under the leaves and in the holes of the trees. Typically, just like terrestrials, in order to hunt, they will also sit and wait for passing prey and then they will ambush it so that they can have a meal. Or if they are a heavy webbing species, they will use their silk fibers to detect motion. Now that we've talked about terrestrial and arboreal tarantulas, we can categorize them even further and discuss the terms Old World and New World. Whether a tarantula is Old World or New World greatly dictates their behavior, temperament, and habits. New World tarantulas originate from North, Central, and South America. Almost all New World species have a special defense that Old Worlds don't have. Old Worlds lack something called urticating hairs. These hairs are located on the abdomen and are small barbed hairs that can embed themselves in the skin, eyes, or mouth of an attacker. Tarantulas with these hairs when threatened will face away from the threat and rub their abdomen with their back legs flicking the hairs at the threat. If these hairs make contact, they can cause discomfort, itching, rashes, and if they get into the eyes or mouth, they may even cause blindness and difficulty breathing. Certain species won't actually flick their hairs. They would much rather sit and wait for their attacker to make contact with them. Now if you were a predator, that definitely would not sound very appetizing. Although these urticating hairs might sound scary, this is their main defense. Due to this, they have much less potent venom than Old Worlds, and would much rather flick hairs than bite. Typically, they are also slower moving than Old Worlds as well, although they are still pretty quick. Old world species originate from Africa, Europe, Asia, and Australia. Since they are lacking urticating hairs, they have much more potent venom and have more aggressive personalities. They will immediately go into a strike pose when threatened, making themselves look as large as possible. If the threat continues, they will not hesitate to bite. Although sometimes they will give you a bit of a warning bite, also known as a dry bite, which is when they bite but don't inject any venom. 
If necessary, New World species will resort to the same aggressive behavior if their urticating hairs and running away doesn't work. New World species venom is reported to be very similar to the sting of a bee. Old World tarantula bites are much more common due to their aggressive nature, and as stated before, their venom is much more potent. Symptoms include localized pain, exhaustion, muscle cramping, swelling, difficulty breathing, and fever. Although there have been no reported deaths from a tarantula bite. All tarantulas go through a process called molting. Molting is a natural process that occurs as the tarantula grows. It's when they start to get too large for the exoskeleton that they're currently in, so they must break out of their old exoskeleton in order to create a new one that's better suited to their current size. Typically during this time, and even before the molting process actually occurs, they will refuse to eat and seem lethargic before the process begins. When they're about to molt, they will flip onto their backs, sometimes even barricading themselves in their hides or burrow as this is a very vulnerable time for them. They might even make a small hammock-like structure out of silk underneath them. This process takes a long time, anywhere from about an hour all the way up to 24 plus hours, although typically it happens under 24 hours. If urticating hairs or a limb has been lost, they can regenerate it during the molting process. Hairs will come back after one molt, and legs will as well, although they will be very small and won't fully regenerate until a few molts have been completed. After the tarantula emerges from its old exoskeleton, its body is very soft and vulnerable. They are unable to eat until about a week after their molt has completed so that their new exoskeleton and fangs can harden. During this time, they are very vulnerable to predators. The main difference between male and female tarantulas is their lifespans. Females can live four to six times longer than males reaching a potential age of 30 plus years for many species. While males typically only live three to six years, after they mature and go through their final molt, their main purpose is to wander and find a female. Unfortunately, once they mature, they only have about six months to two years to live. Here is Tanya's tease talking about one of her mature males. This is Bruce, um, Salmon Pink, LP. Um, he's a mature male. Um, I bought him as a mature male because um, I just fell in love with him and I just couldn't resist him. Um, he's fully hooked out. Don't know how much you can see of the front there. Where his hooks are. There you go, can you see him? Yeah, so that's him. He's a big lad. He's about, I'd say, about nine, nine inches from top to toe of his legs. Um, yeah, nine or ten inches, I'd say, maybe ten. Um, fully, fully spread out, should I say? Um, because he's. I have another one, um, Betty, um, female, adult female. She um, she's seven inches spread out. Her old malt was so she's a bit bigger than that now. Um, so and he's his leg span's bigger. So I'd say he's a good nine ten inches spread out. Um, yeah, but he's awesome. 
he likes it quite dry uh, in there uh, there is he can crawl into this skull if he wanted to um so yeah quite dry uh water dish yeah he's got plenty of room in there to live out the rest of his days we don't know how long he's got left if we're lucky we can get a year out of him but who knows because i don't know when he matured so because as i said i bought him as a mature male so yeah that's the lovely Bruce. Before wandering off, they will spin a sperm web. He will rub himself on the web and then go out searching for a female, using her pheromones to guide him. Once he finds her, he will tap his foot near her hide or burrow to alert her of his presence. If she is receptive, she will emerge from her burrow if not, she will either pay no attention to him or attack. If she emerges, the male will begin a series of courtship displays. If she accepts, he will begin to mate with her, holding her fangs back with the hooks on his legs. These hooks only emerge after the final molt in the male is mature. When finished mating, he will try to get away as quickly as possible. Females will often try to attack and eat the males after mating. Tarantulas are absolutely incredible creatures. And there are so many beautiful species sharing this world with us. And each one of them has varying behaviors, temperaments, and habits. All right, everybody, that is everything for today's video. I hope you all enjoyed learning a bit about tarantula behavior and temperament as well as seeing some of the beautiful species that inhabit this world with us. Now, if you guys did enjoy this video, make sure you leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And make sure you guys hit that notification bell so you don't miss a single upload. And thank you so much to all of the wonderful keepers as well as Tanya's Tees that sent me their clips and photos that made this video possible. And again, I did link Tanya's Tea's channel down in the description, so definitely go and check her channel out. And if you guys would like to follow me on Instagram or Twitter, it's Callie's Creatures, and I post very frequent updates about my animals on there. Alright, well if you guys have any suggestions or questions, leave them down in the comments. And I hope you all have a beautiful day, and I will see you all in another video soon. Bye! I want to add in a shout out for that tarantula guy. He sent me some amazing clips of his tarantulas. A link to his channel will be in the description. Definitely go and check his channel out. Now that officially ends today's video, I have some very interesting content planned for this week, so stay tuned to find out what I have planned. <laughs>